In the following presentation, you will hear a speaker discuss the birth of the telephone. On March 10, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell toiled in his lab in Boston, Massachusetts. The lab was actually a few small bedrooms in a boarding house. Hanging on one of the walls was a portrait of an owl. It was given to the inventor as a joke because he often worked late into the night. A pale, tall man with sideburns and a bushy mustache, Bell stared at his unusual contraption. He had been working on it for several years. Along the way, his invention had become an instrument of metal, rods, and wires. Bell had experimented with many other machines, but those trials had ended in failure. Sometimes he got discouraged, but he never gave up. Now, history was about to be made. To see if the device would work, Bell called into the mouthpiece. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Seconds later, his assistant burst through the door. He had heard Bell's voice, even though he was in another room with a hallway in between. The two men switched places. Thomas Watson read from a book. A few of his words came through clearly. Then he said, Mr. Bell, do you understand what I say? Alexander Graham Bell heard every word. After years of research, the telephone was finally born. One thing that makes modern humans special is our ability to build communities. Now, researchers have new findings on how Neanderthals, our distant cousins, built clans of their own. NPR's Jeff Brumfield has more. Neanderthals get a bad rap as cave-dwelling thugs with clubs. Laurit Scove says you really need to get that picture out of your head. You know, this, this image of Neanderthals being brutes is uh, it's not quite accurate. The more we learn about them, the more like humans they actually <laughs> appear to be. They could make tools, sew clothes, and they lived in communities. But what did those communities look like? Well, that's been a little bit of an open question until now. Scove is a paleogeneticist at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany. And he's been looking at Neanderthals found in two caves in central Russia. Well, okay, he hasn't actually been to the caves. I really wanted to, but then 2020 happened with the COVID the pandemic, and now with the war between Russia and, and Ukraine. But he's been studying the bones drilling tiny holes and then extracting their DNA. It's delicate work. One drop of my sweat would outweigh the Neanderthal DNA molecules a million to one or something like that. So you got to be really careful. Publishing in the journal Nature, Scove and his colleagues revealed the genetic codes of 13 Neanderthals living in the caves, including several who were related. A father and his daughter, his teenage daughter, in fact. As well as a boy around the age of 10 who had a female relative, maybe a grandmother or an aunt, Lara Cassidy of Trinity College in Dublin says this is not the first time Neanderthals have been sequenced. What makes this study so special is that these 13 individuals all lived in or around the same place at roughly the same time. That is really exciting because what we have is community and we can start to maybe understand a bit about how these communities worked. Cassidy, who is not a researcher on the study, says the family relations are intriguing, but she'd like to know more about what tied others in the cave together. Humans, for example, build social groups of unrelated individuals. A unique thing about Homo sapiens is flexibility. We seem to be able to put ourselves together in all sorts of different configurations. It would be nice to know if Neanderthals were as flexible. The genetic data isn't quite good enough to see if these folks are distant relatives or in-laws or just friends. Laurent Scove says he's working to get a clearer picture. There's one other mystery. How did the father and daughter and the boy and his relative die? Scove says there aren't any clear clues, but he suspects starvation. Life back then was rough. They survived by hunting bison, and you can imagine if one year they don't manage to hunt and catch all they need, you know, maybe something sad, something sad like that. These individuals lived about 55,000 years ago at a time when humans were on the rise and Neanderthals were disappearing. There's very few left. But he says they didn't go completely extinct. Humans from outside Africa contain, on average, about 2% Neanderthal DNA. 
In other words, at least sometimes it seems, humans and Neanderthals found each other and built communities together. Jeff Brumfield, NPR News.